So going buried alive reanimate mm. is going to be really really strong here. Uh, his opponent really wouldn't have a way to interact with that at all. Yeah, I mean, looking at these matchups, I'd be happy watching every single one of them. Oh know, yeah, they're all really them. interesting. But uh, yeah, starting with this one, and then uh, hopefully we'll see something really interesting shake out for the uh, for the semifinals. Yeah. And of course, if we ha if, if this matchup just goes by really fast, we yeah, will certainly bring another match. This is probably going to be the fastest of yeah. the matchups. Uh, Agro Loam, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, uh, it uses Life from the Loam in conjunction with Seismic Assault mm -hmm. uh, to create an engine that makes it very difficult for your opponent to have any sort of board presence at all. Uh, you just it, you keep loaming lands back to your hand and then pitching them to deal two damage to a creature or player, and you have so many lands because of your Loam engine with Cycling Lands that you can virtually kill everything on the table, and once you've taken all pressure off of yourself, uh, you can just start aiming things at your opponent's face, and yeah. it closes the game very quickly. It's a very aggressive deck. Uh, it has access to discard spells. Uh, it usually plays Terravore, although I'm not sure if this player has, you know, gone to a four-color version to play Knight of the Reliquary. He seems like he would be an upgrade in this type of archetype. But again, Agrolome is something we haven't really seen for years. Um, yeah, it's not one that uh, that's uh, been you know, saturating the top tables. Uh. Yeah, I, I actually, on uh, the ride home from Charlotte, I was in a car with Gerard, Lou Laskin, and Nick Spagnolo, and I said, what if I just built Agro Loam for Legacy? And I, I was berated by everyone who was saying, it's a combo <laughs> format now. That deck just beats every aggro deck. You just get crushed every time. So I, you know, it's like, okay, I guess I won't build Agro Loam, but... The deck has access to some of the better card advantage engines. If it's not playing against combo decks, it does very well. So this top eight does look very good for the aggro loan player. Uh, Vengevine's going to be good against him, though. Yeah, and uh, Vengevine's, as we Vengevine's earlier, good against non-swords removal. Kind of a uh, so really, really good creature, you know, in general. Yeah. And it's, I love to see that it's shining in Legacy because it doesn't yeah. seem, it can't seem to squeeze its way into standard in any really uh, relevant way. That may change. Looking forward uh, and seeing a lot of Titans being predicted for standard, I don't know that that Vengevine will yeah Titans will shine, trump but yeah, Vengevines. and that's been the problem for Vengevine since M uh, M11. But sounds like we're going to be uh, going right to the match. All right, right here, here we so. are. On the left, we have Ken Adams uh, piloting his black green deck, and on the right, we have Micah Greenbaum. Uh, I think Micah's name is actually spelled wrong. It's M I C A H. Yeah, M I C A H. It's, uh, just the A and the H are switched. Now, uh, there we go. But yeah, Vengevine. Uh, it, it's great to see that card shine in Legacy, because yeah. I think it's just one of the. Not only is it just an exciting card and a very powerful card, I think it's uh, it's an interesting card because, you know, it does it does kind of force like some some amount of kind of overcommitment in a way like I you need to play two guys to get this third guy out of the graveyard and you know I think that was one of my first inclinations when I saw it I was like is this good I'm, do you really want to be playing a bunch of dudes and then just like get wrath get them all wrathed away like you just have to play a ton of guys and I, I kind of wasn't sure about the card and then uh then I was sure about the card <laughs> shortly it's thereafter. Definitely a good card. Yeah. Uh, in the pre Titan standard, yeah. it was a menace. But uh, since Titans have come around, generally in Magic, you can beat people by going one step larger than them or yeah. two steps smaller than them. Yeah, that's <laughs> so an interesting sorry. way to look at it. So the uh, general rules. Callblade broke those rules, though, because it played on every single plane. Right. It, it played was... the very low curve game and it played the very high curve game very well. But we won't have to deal with that anymore. Yeah, not at all. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what M12 brings us to play with. I mean, really, we're, we have a fresh format coming in just a couple of weeks. All right, um, so both these players have seen each other's deck lists. They know what to expect. Uh, Micah was undefeated after the... Uh, or was that him? Final stands after round nine. Let me look in, this is yeah. This is after round eight, and that's after round nine. Oh no. Um. Yeah. Michael Greenbaum went uh, X O two. Wow. Here, yeah, so uh, undefeated and draws in. So, Micah starts off on the play. Forgotten Cave. Uh, it's the uh, red land from Onslaught. It comes into play tapped and taps for red mana, and you can pay one random mana to cycle it. Mm -hmm. 
these types of lands work incredibly well with this life in the loam. They create you know, a great card advantage engine that lets them put the pieces together to uh, dominate aggressive matchups. Ken Adams, uh, he's going to lead off. Um, I think he's leading off with a Cabal Therapy. Yeah, turn and, one discard uh, spell. Definitely. I think uh, Dark Confidant is the card I would name. I'm not sure how familiar Ken is with Aggro Loam. It's, it's a pretty obscure deck, uh, but Dark Confidant's probably the, the best card he can name in this spot, especially with Micah being on the play. So it looks like Ken is trying to decide what to name. We will certainly let you know what he names as soon as we know. Ken looking over his hand trying to figure out what he wants to name. And, and uh, looks like he may have named Bob considering he set it aside there. Yep. And it was Beautiful. Bob. Yep. Very well, good. So what else do we Ken see Ken must know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, master. Uh, so see. he has a Devastating Dreams in his hand. Now Devastating Dreams is another very interesting card. Uh, it costs red, red, and as an additional cost, you have to discard X cards from your hand. And then you, each player sacrifices X lands, and Devastating Dreams deals X damage to each creature. So it's like a Wrath and an Armageddon all built in one. And because you're working off a Loam Engine, mm -hmm. what happens is you're, you end up with a bunch of lands in your hand mm -hmm. uh, afterward, and you're able to just play lands and get out of the Armageddon situation, and you've just killed all of your opponent's lands and all of their creatures. Yeah, that, that does sound pretty devastating, right? Ooh, and that's a Vindicate. That's a new addition to this deck. Uh, not a common inclusion but was in Agro Loan decks. A Vindicate? Vindicate, okay. Yeah. I just didn't hear what you said from the outside yelling of the <laughs> outside of the booth. Kind of missed what you said. So, uh... Micah fetches a. Uh, that's a Savannah. Savannah, yeah. So Micah is playing a uh, a four color version of Agro Loam. That's what I was wondering before. Uh, I imagine he's going to have Night of the Royal Quarry over Tower of War here. That's uh, something I was thinking about doing. <laughs> yeah, just just having that tutor ability seems really good. Too. Sylvan Library. Uh, that card is incredible in this deck because it's a. Uh, even though you're kind of a like creature-based deck with mm. like removal and discard and kind of rocky, um, Sylvan Library allows you to assemble pieces that really let you do like a number of very broken things. Yeah, Sylvan Library definitely uh, just a powerful card in general. Yeah, so Ken is gonna play this Tarmogoyf here, and uh, I'm surprised he didn't sacrifice that to Cabal Therapy, naming Vindicate. Uh, he knows his opponent has one in hand, and it's very crucial to Ken to play his. Uh, third land on the next turn so that he can resolve his buried alive. Yeah, that's a good point. So we'll see if uh, we'll see if Micah decides to use that Vindicate. Um, Micah may think that the uh, Tarmogoyf is a greater threat and decide to Vindicate that. So there are a lot of different things that can happen right. on this turn. Well, if that's the case, then it may have been the right play for Ken to save his Cabal Therapy. So, yeah. Yeah, he goes ahead and uh, hits that Tarmogoyf. And uh, that may be game for Micah. I think Ken at this point can uh, untap and bury it alive, uh, which will allow him to search his library for Phyrexian Devourer, mm -hmm. um, Triskelion, yep. and um, Necroticus. Necroticus. And then the next turn, he'll be able to cast a Reanimate. And uh, that should break this game wide open. And looks like and that's the plan. There's the Buried, buried alive. alive. Buried Alive, an uncommon from Odyssey, and also a, uh, I don't know if it's a common or uncommon, but it was in Mirage originally. Um, yeah, the, uh, the Mirage art is my personal favorite. It's really kind of disturbing it's, yeah, artwork. Yeah, some zombie-ish stuff going on. Yeah. Great. So there they are, the three cards you mentioned, Triskelion, Necrotic Ooze, and Phyrexian Devourer. So reanimate on the Necrotic Ooze makes it into a Triskelion and Phyrexian Devourer, or at least gives it those abilities, and allows Ken to uh, to win the game. It was an uncommon Weatherlight. That's what it was. Okay, it wasn't Mirage then. Okay. Are you sure it wasn't a Mirage also? Yeah. <laughs> According to uh, Jeremy, he's just looking right at it, so...
Now, uh, Odyssey Weatherlight Commander. Yep. We have uh, Weatherlight right next to uh, it looks like Mirage Vision Weatherlight, same block. Uh, my confusion. Now we have. Uh, now, even if Micah has a thought cease to get the reanimate out of Ken's hand, he's still got a second reanimate. So there it is. Devastating dreams and. Uh, Micah's plan is going to be to destroy all of Ken's lands in hopes that uh, Ken will not have a black source to be able to uh, combo out here. And, uh, and yeah, he says, I he have one in hand. He just shows the Bayou and reanimate, and Micah packs it in. Wow, uh, on to game the two. The key turn in that game was uh, when Micah chose to vindicate the Tarmogoyf instead of the land. That allowed uh, Ken to combo him out, and uh, it was extremely important. Now, Ken's sideboard is surprisingly well positioned for an aggro loan matchup. Uh, Dark Confidant, very good in this matchup. Mm. Uh, you want to stick it early. Uh, if you can get it in before the Seismic Assaults and pick up some card advantage off of it, that's really important. Uh, Agarolum will struggle if you assemble enough power on the board quickly enough. Uh, Tarmogoyf is a good card against them. Mm. They uh, they really shine against aggro decks that are not Tarmogoyf based. So like the Stoneforge Mystic decks, mm -hmm. Uh, Agrolum will do very well against them. That might be why he did so well. Agrolum will also crush Merfolk mm -hmm. ten ways till Sunday. Mm -hmm. Seems like an interesting deck. I'd love to uh, love to see the list, but unfortunately, in the meantime, we yeah. haven't. Uh, we yeah. didn't really get to see it. Right, we haven't it's gotten to see it. It's Yeah, yeah. It's, it sounds interesting, and uh, definitely hope to see the list pretty soon. But um, in the meantime, we do have a question for you guys—a trivia question—and you can win three months of free premium for StarCityGames.com. Uh, you will tweet your answer at SCG Live with the hashtag SCG Premium. Include your answer to the question and your StarCityGames.com username, and uh, you you could win. We'll choose a random winner out of the answers we uh, we get and out of the correct answers we get, and um, we will announce that winner at the end of this this match here. So the question, I'm going to start off easy and get them get them harder. I already have three questions lined up here. Oh, so beautiful. Uh, the question for three months of premium is who won the standard portion of Star City Games Baltimore? And uh, remember, uh, respond on Twitter, at SCG Live, right. hashtag SCG Premium, and remember to include your Star City Games username. That's that right. way, when you win, we can apply it directly onto your Star City Games account. Right. So uh, it was a whole 12 hours ago. Um, if, it, it, I know that's a little bit tough to remember. You may be able to search the uh, the internet way back machine for the archives and find out yep. what the answer is. This information is available to you if you do not know. <laughs> uh, I did an interview with him earlier today. One of my favorite people in the Magic oh, you community. Just, it's a him. That just guess, eliminates half yeah. of the uh, possible... If we were playing Guess Who. <laughs> yeah. Aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Does he have a mustache? <laughs> Is he wearing a hat? <laughs> that was a fun game. Is very, he a cowboy? <laughs> <laughs> I would always ask like really obscure subjective questions. <laughs> like, does he like ice cream? <laughs> and, like where they say no, like put a bunch of people down and they'd be like, how do you know? And I'd be like, like, obviously, like look at this guy, he clearly doesn't like ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> you next leveling guess who? <laughs> just uh, uh <laughs> what does it all mean? It just, I just, <laughs> just want to buy guess who now. I'm just go to Target and buy guess it's who also and just trite. play it like that. Yeah, I'm just want to play it like that with people. Hey guys, want to play guess who? It's really fun the way I play. It's really, I have a variant. <laughs> An existential variant. <laughs> existential, <laughs> guess who? <laughs> if you put down the person, then, you know. Yeah. So, uh, Micah shuffling up. <laughs> Does this person believe in the afterlife? <laughs> <laughs> Too good. <laughs> so, Ken Adams up a game. Ken's a player who, you know, I, th I think he deserves some success. Micah, also, what, I'm really, deserve? no, no, Micah, Micah also. <laughs> On the a, other uh, hand. Also an incredible player. Uh, you know, going X1-1 in one of these events is yeah. very difficult. Micah, 
you know, oh no, he went X02, so he's oh, even that's lost right, that's a right. match he's yet. Not lost and yet, he's so. also, like, something really impressive about Micah is that he's playing a deck that most people haven't seen for years, and many people just have never seen it at all. Yeah, I like, mean, this honestly, it's a very I, strange deck. I've only seen, like, I've kind of, like, I've heard, heard of the list, seen, you know, lists, but haven't really analyzed them. Don't think I've ever seen them played in, in, in coverage. Uh, so, I'm certainly unfamiliar with it, and if I were facing it, I don't know what I'd expect. I'd be reading cards for sure. What is that? Yeah. What is uh, that? What does that do? What is that? So. Well, Agrolum is one of those decks that uh, from time to time you'll see people on forums bring up Agrolum and Legacy, mm -hmm. and people, you know, argue back and forth a bit. And I feel like in a lot of ways the community has kind of laughed it out of the format. Yeah. But uh, I've always felt it was very strong. I remember in in older formats, I was always terrified to play against it because it does so well against everything that's not a combo deck. It crushes Unfortunately like, for Mike, Ken, decks and Ken decks. can do kind yes. of go several ways with his deck, including multiple different combo decks, uh, you know, which we just saw happen in game one. So. Yeah, the uh, Progenitus plan is also very strong against Micah, but uh, pretty hard to achieve. Four lands is not the easiest thing. All right, uh, Leyline of the Void comes down from Micah Greenbaum. So he uh, he shuts off the uh, the Buried Alive shenanigans right away. Yeah. And uh, Leyline of the Void only removes the cards from Ken Adams' graveyard. It does not affect Micah's graveyard. So Micah will still have uh, a great time just uh, playing around with his life from the loams and cycling lands. All right, so Ken, again, has uh, access to a turn one Cabal Therapy, if he so desires. But it'll, so, uh, it so doesn't get flashback, a, uh, unfortunately, swamp. for Ken. And uh, notice Ken Adam grabs a Swamp as opposed to a Bayou. His opponent played a turn one Wasteland, yep. and uh, perhaps uh, Ken just wants to uh, prevent his opponent from hitting anything. So, so Cabal uh, Therapy Ken, Ken. names... Uh, I presume he named Dark Confidant again. Right. Uh, that's what I would do, especially with Mike on the play. And he sees a hand of Mox Diamond, uh, Tranquil Thicket, Vindicate, Devastating Dreams, and Countryside Crusher. Countryside Crusher is a really cool card. Yeah. Uh, he's a rare from Morning Tide, a 3 3 for a colorless and two red. And at the beginning of your upkeep, uh, he pumps some iron. Yeah. He reveals the top card of your library, and if it's a land, he puts it in the graveyard, and then he gets a plus one plus one counter. And then if you reveal the land, you keep doing that. Yeah. So if you have a bunch of lands on the top of your library, he just, he just gets, gets very huge, big very quickly. Yeah. And he actually gets bigger whenever a land goes to your graveyard from anywhere. So Yeah, it's a pretty pretty awesome card. Uh, did not shine in Lorwyn, but that was probably due to uh, due to the fairy menace in that standard environment, so so Micah uses that Mox Diamond to cycle his Tranquil Thicket. Um, and he draws a Life from the Loam, which is pretty clutch here. Uh, this will allow Micah to start his card advantage engine going. This is what makes the deck so strong against control decks. They really just can never keep up with Loam. It's a better card advantage engine than just about anything else in the game. It's a two mana Ancestral Vision, or Ancestral Recall that he can just use every single right. turn. And that's a Dust Bowl. Yeah, we saw that in Drew's list earlier. I don't know that he actually used it, but... Oh, yeah, he did. He did use it. He in did, one, actually, one use point. it. And he used it on his own land to prevent, to prevent a lifelink trigger. Right. Now, uh, Ken uh, was given the opportunity to untap with two lands in play. I'm not sure if he expected this, but... Uh, Looks like Ken has surgical extraction for that loam, and that could be uh, that could be really good from what I understand. Yes, that can be very good. Uh, Mike like uh, does not operate very well when uh, it doesn't have access to life in the loam. Very strong plays from Ken. Yeah, it's like Ken, uh, surgical extraction to the loam, and, and uh, stick a dark confidant in the same turn. That's something that you were saying was pretty key too. Yeah, pretty key in this matchup. Uh, Micah does not have. Uh, spot removal spell other than Vindicate, and he does not have the correct land to uh, cast the Vindicate or the Devastating Dreams in the next turn. So he's going to be in a pretty good spot. Also, Devastating Dreams has just lost a ton of value now that Ken Adams has uh, cut the life from the loans out of Mike's deck. 
and uh, something we just saw, I just saw as he was rifling through uh, the deck was I saw a Grove of the Burn Willows, huh. which uh, perhaps uh, Punishing Fire Grove of the Burn Willows may have been a very good choice this weekend because we saw that do very well earlier. Yeah. Alright, so Ken goes ahead, uh, removes all the loams from the game with his surgical extraction. That'll uh, put Ken down to 17 life. And uh, Ken's going to take a look at this hand and see what's what's there. And see what's different from cards. what he saw earlier. Not much, but... And uh, what am I going to draw here? It looked like a Sylvan library to me. <laughs> it does look like it from that quick little sliver. But I thought it might have been black-bordered, so maybe it's a Tarmogoyf? Uh, I thought he had a black-bordered Sylvan library. Uh, did he? Okay. It's a little bit uh, deceptive because of the sleeves that he's using make it look like a white border, make all the cards look kind of white border-ish. It, it was a Tarmogoyf. It was Tarmogoyf, okay. All right. Uh, Tarmogoyf, interesting. Uh, it's a future sight card, so its casting cost is on the wrong side. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Ken will reveal Reanimate, which is uh, you know, a rampant growth in this spot if he wants it to be. You can target that Dryad Arbor. Uh, those Pretty are cool exiled, though. Oh, it's exiled. Yeah, and that's what's kind of interesting, because that Tarmor Wave is just a 1-2 right now. I mean, just a Wasteland. It's not even going to count oh, anything well, in the, Ken's uh, graveyard, the, right? No, the Dryad Arbor was Wastelanded, wasn't it? Was it? I mean... Yeah, it was just Wastelanded. Oh, Leyline of the Void. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. So, so I'm talking about that Tarmogoyf and that Leyline don't interact very uh, very well because that Tarmogoyf's pretty small. That's it's, true. It's a Squire Goyf right now. Now, the, uh, the reanimate that's in Ken's hand is just a dead card. Now, uh, Tarmogoyf is uh, from the set Future Sight, and it was one of these uh, time-shifted cards. So, uh, you know, presumably they said they were going to reprint all the time-shifted cards. Yeah, but they were all from I'm possible not... futures, I think, was, yeah. was the idea. So I'm not sure if uh, Tarmogoyf's actually going to get reprinted, but you never know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could see him potentially being reprinted. I mean, they're reprinting Lava Mancer right now, uh, Grim Lava Mancer, and that card... That's I definitely think on par. Have, yeah, may have thought the same Sparrow thing about Grim Lava Mancer. Could very so well Mike see elected Goyf to reprinted. not trade that Goyf for the Dark Confidant. Uh, Ken Adams is going to sacrifice his Vernon Catacombs and find a Bayou. I'm interested that he chose to get the Bayou instead of the Forest. Yeah, with the, uh, well, the Wasteland was already used, but yeah, <laughs> read Dust Bowl, maybe I shouldn't get by you. Yeah, yeah. gets a forest. Some classic art on these lands from Canada's. Oh, yeah. The originals, I mean, original artwork uh, for all these, I believe those are either unlimited or revised. And uh, Ken has a Tarmogoyf of his own. Again, not all that impressive right now. Um, yeah, neither player really uh, doing much at this point in the game. But yeah, anything Ken plays doesn't even affect the Tarmogoyf because of that ley line of the void. Yeah, now, uh, I think Mike is probably going to go ahead and try to stick the Sylvan Library, which uh, and, uh, he will do. And then... Uh, He's probably going to play a land, but maybe not. Maybe he wants to cycle. Yeah, he wants to cycle it. He's going to elect to not play that turn called Thicker from his hand. Ken you were gets right to reveal about a bio. The, about the white border uh, Sylvan Library. I thought it was black border for, for some reason. So, uh, <laughs> so Ken did keep the, uh, the graveyard shenanigans combo in the deck. We saw reanimate in his hand. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I wouldn't have taken it out. I no, think, just, uh, uh, you know, I you have to keep it in just to keep your opponent honest in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, his opponent happened to have the uh, haven't had a ley line this time around, but uh, it's still uh, like it, it's still important to have in your deck just to have that option because you know the aggro loam deck specifically loses the combo decks, and that's its weakness. Right, so leaving the combo in definitely seems like a good idea. It's um, very counterintuitive to take the combo out. <laughs> absolutely. Can't get a great yeah. look at his hand. 
I, I, I know there's a Vengevine. I know there's a Reanimate. I knew there was a Bayou, but the Bayou is now on the board. Ken knows the opponent has a uh, Devastating Dreams in hand, so I don't think he wants to... Uh, he knows the opponent's slow rolling uh, some, uh, some lands, too, so... I don't think he wants to overcommit to the board too much, but uh, he goes ahead and casts a Fauna Shaman. Now, uh, Mike Greenbaum's going to look at the top of his library, and he's looking for a red source so that he can uh, cast the Devastating Dreams. Um, the Devastating Dreams for a uh, for a large number right here would be pretty really, really <laughs> hurt. Yeah, that card's pretty aptly named, from what I can tell. I'm surprised that Kenny even played the third land there. That's from that cycle in that, it was, it was Torment, right? It was like the Dream cycle, Insidious Dreams yeah. was the black one. Mm -hmm. um, Nostalgic Dreams is the green one. That's my one of my favorite cards ever. It was the, uh, what was the blue one I'm trying to remember? Um, you know, I don't remember. Yeah. It wasn't very good. No, that's why I don't <laughs> remember. I, I remember playing the black one. That was the only one I remember playing. So, Micah did find the untapped red source. Now, uh, I think he's going to uh, go ahead and, uh, ooh, what's going on here? All right. Yep. He's going to put Ken up to 16, and uh, here comes Devastating Dreams for three, which is going to wipe the board and uh, leave Ken with, n like, nothing in play. Not like nothing, actual nothing in play. <laughs> And I think Ken's going to be pretty upset with himself that he played that Bayou there. And Micah goes ahead and uh, discards his hand. Now Micah has a Sylvan Library and a Mox Diamond to Ken Adams nothing. But Ken Adams has a hand yeah. and lands in his deck, so. So just, um, just to understand how Devastating Dreams works, uh, it's discard X cards, each player sacrifices X lands and it does X damage to each creature? Is that yes. Right, okay. Micah decides to uh, Go ahead and, oh wow, he paid four life, and uh, suddenly Micah is just dominating this game. Yeah, that four life was well worth it. And had uh, Ken held that bio, he wouldn't have been able to cast a Birds of Paradise that turn. So not only does uh, Micah have an active Bob, but an active Sylvan Library, and he is uh, going gone from empty-handed to pretty much the pick of the litter off the top of his deck. Yeah, and... Um, one of the more interesting things that's going on here now, too, is that, uh, you know, we're seeing the uh, the way Agrolome kind of, like, takes over a game out of nowhere. Like, he had no cards in his hand. Yeah. Yeah, and right now, Ken Adams looks like he's on turn one with no lands and can't mulligan. And, uh... Mike is drawing some lands, though. Yeah, the uh, Sylvan Library is doing a lot of work here for Micah. And uh, now he's also assembled Punishing Fire. Um, he grove of the Burnwalls? Well, the Grove of the oh, Burnwalls yeah, right. he is lost the grove, yeah. uh, in his graveyard, and he doesn't have the loans in his deck. But you know, this just shows how strong Devastating Dreams can be. Yeah, so pretty crazy. I think uh, this Confidant may go all the way if Ken can't find a land to even even threaten to find an answer. Well, he does top deck a land, I believe. Uh, Misty Rainforest. And uh, now he's going to uh, play a Birds of Paradise. That's going to put Ken down to 11, cracking that fetch land. And I imagine Ken's going to grab a basic forest. Seems like it would be the best play here.
No, he goes with the Bayou. Interesting. Definitely. Mike has played one wasteland so far this game. I assume he's got three more. I think he may have been thinking the same thing right there, looking through yeah, his library. Um, I don't, I don't see the uh, Bloodgast anywhere in Ken's deck, which is interesting. I think it's one of the better cards here. Again, he may be unfamiliar with the deck and not, you know. I mean, know the, uh, is Bloodgast good? It can't come back from the the, yeah, the ley line of the void is the uh, line, so. very good against it, but uh, in general, it's good against yeah. Dyrolong. Fair enough. So Mike grabs a plateau, and I believe I'm not sure what's in his hand. It might be the uh, punishing fire that we saw earlier. It is. So I think he's going to go ahead and uh, punish. Yeah, the punish birds. that birds. Uh, Poor birds didn't even do anything. Ken bends it. Just chilling out. Uh, Mike goes ahead. He reveals the Tarmogoyf. Uh, put him down to ten. And then he's going to attack Ken, putting Ken down to nine. Mike is just. Go down to, uh, Mike is just. Mike is just seeing yeah. so many cards. <laughs> see, uh, Ken can play a uh, noble hierarch, but it doesn't do much. Ken's going to cast a reanimate. Um, Michael will go ahead and uh, remove his creator from the game. Hence, fizzling said mana leak. And Ken packs it up. Yeah. Ken says, let's go to game three. Yeah, this uh, this game was so, like, I, I, I don't know how Ken could have could have really crawled back into it because yeah, Mike and had, that's what Agrolum does. Yeah. It's a really. Uh, I could, can't imagine. I mean, I can imagine that it seems like it would be very frustrating to play against because Micah uh, played that devastating greens, um, and then you know that was where he won the game. Yeah. <laughs> but several turns went by of you know Micah not able to really close. Not that he couldn't have, but it was just it's just like a matter of time kind of thing. And uh, you know, Ken obviously just in a situation with Leyline of the Void where he can't even. Not only can he is he has his board been completely wiped, but his one of his key strategies been completely wiped as well. And uh, yeah, it just seems like a very frustrating deck to kind of play against. Where just once it gets that, uh, once it reaches that devastating dreams. Yeah, and uh, uh, that game could have been very different had Ken uh, had Ken just not played that bio. Yeah. So turn after the Devastating Dreams, he would have played he the birds. He would have had the birds, yeah. And Micah would not have been able to punish him fire right away. Right. And then he would have stuck a goyf. And who yeah, knows where it would have gone a, from there. So that's a good point, yeah. So that was definitely the key the key play of that game. Excellent. Adams uh, decided to play a bayou when he knew his opponent had the Devastating Dreams in hand. And uh, it really hurt him. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, Kent really wants to focus on two drops. Yeah, he's trying to Making a couple changes, probably uh, not a terrible idea. And uh, both players now shuffling up, decided on their changes. Now I think uh, Ken may be thinking, well, my one combo doesn't really work, so maybe if I try this Progenitus thing. And proge if he does get a Progenitus in play against Micah, that's probably lights. Yeah. But it's going to be hard to get the form out. Uh, I mean, is there room for him to have both combos there? I mean, um, there's certainly room for it, but the one combo seems to be hated out pretty heavily by Micah. Micah has, um, Micah has ley lines, crypts, all this stuff. If you just take out the uh, buried alive, it seems like you can put yourself in a pretty good spot. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Yeah, I mean, it's interesting you say the, the one combo's hated out pretty well, but l like you mentioned, the other combo's pretty well hated out as well because reaching four lands against this deck doesn't seem like an easy feat. Yeah, when they're when they're vindicating and wastelanding and doing yeah. all this. So, uh, in fact, both of those combos... Uh, yeah, the deck is naturally strong against that type of thing. But when you're on the play, getting to four lands is not impossible. Right. Deck. Well, wow. <laughs> wow, Mulligan to five. Turns you yeah, to a mox double diamond, so line. Kind of a Mulligan to four. I think... That's got to be great for Ken. Oh, with the Thoughtseize, too? Yeah. Wow. So, uh, Ken leads with a... Uh, well, Micah technically leads with a double Leyline of the Void in play. Uh, mm -hmm. Ken leads with a turn one Thoughtseize and sees Tarmogoyf, Knight of the Reliquary, Mox Diamond, and, uh, what is it, Tranquil Thicket and Forest? Yeah, I'm actually surprised he didn't just take the Mox Diamond there. Uh, leaves Micah with only green mana in his four-color deck. Yeah. Guess he figures take the two drop and uh, let him keep the Mox Diamond. I mean, the Mox Diamond is not going to do anything. Basically, it can accelerate him to two. Yeah, and uh, he, the Mox he, Diamond actually is card disadvantage. Right. So, uh, I mean, he's already had two Leyland Voids, and then he got Thoughtseize. So, at this point, he's not working with many cards. So, maybe yeah. Ken thinks, well, if he uses this Mox, then I'm going to get a pretty good advantage here. Yeah, so he decides to use the Mox. Discarding Tranquil Thicket passes his turn. So, I mean, he accelerates himself into two mana, but uh, without a Goyf there to play, can't really capitalize on it. Ken now, second Bayou added to the board. Go and, ahead uh, and, uh, play Noble, Noble Hierarch. Hierarch. And, and pass the turn. Micah draws Wooded Foothills, adds it to the board, cracks it. And uh, he's going to stick a Night of the Reliquary. Night of the Reliquary is great against Ken's deck. It uh, outclasses creatures pretty well. Uh, did Ken didn't happen to have a natural order in hand, did he? Uh, I didn't see it, but uh, I didn't see it either, that one card I mean, could be a portal. Could very copy. easily go land natural order progenitus and next that turn. That would be it. Yeah. Ken would probably uh, advance to the uh, semis right then and there. Kind of all depends on what is in his hand and what is on the top of his deck. But there, there is the Knight of the Reliquary you predicted. Mm -hmm. Let's see, is that a natural order? Let's see. Fetch land. His opponent is tapped out, so. At this point, Ken's probably just going to want to grab another. Uh, he probably wants to leave one body in his deck. So, if he has the natural order, I don't think it really matters what he gets. Right, which makes me think he may not have the natural order, but yeah. still, play smart. Yeah, it's better to play tight. I think he's, uh, hopefully he's not tilting at all. But it uh, doesn't look like natural order. No, it's a... What it's is a big it? game oh, hunter. Oh, is that big game hunter? Yeah. Yeah, and that's going to kill this uh, Knight of the Reliquary. Nice. Yeah, that is some big game. It is some big game. He attacks for one, puts Micah down to 18, and Micah just has one card left in hand. And do we uh, know what it is? It's important to remember no, that uh, Agrolome is a deck that goes down to very few cards very quickly, and then, ooh. Second night of the Reliquary, yeah. Ken, uh, Ken oh. really wants to draw a natural order here. Mm, no, he's all reanimate. Uh, reanimate. Not very good. Um, Not against double ley line, or no. even single ley line. So. Big game hunter. Big game wants, hunter is going to, to rumble. Uh, What's the power toughness on big game hunter? Uh, he's a one one. Okay. Uh, so not a one one death touch, right? Let's see what's happening here. I think uh, Ken may just think that it has absolutely no value, so he's just trying to. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's just trying to get a free point. See if he could uh, get his opponent to not block. Yeah. Why Seems not? Seems fine. So, let me look at that again. Let's say, uh... Okay. And, uh... Yeah, the reanimates are still in Ken's deck, which I'm pretty surprised about. Ken does not have much action here. He's going oh. to, uh... Reanimate targeting Knight of the Reliquary. And, yep. uh, he's going to reanimate Ken Micah's Knight of the Reliquary. That knight is just a 2-2, though. 
because there are no lands in Ken's graveyard and there won't be. There will not be lands in Ken's graveyard anytime soon. Birds of Paradise for Ken. Passes back to Micah. Micah has uh, now two cards in hand off after his draw step. Yeah, and uh, Micah, pretty nice peels thus far. Yeah, um, he, double you know, he, had, the road he was down to three cards in his first turn and has drawn very well. Ken, on the other hand, has been getting pretty flooded. Ooh, oh, triple wow. Knight of the Reliquary. This is just, uh, this is that's just probably the best card in the stack against Ken's stack. Ken draws another land. Pretty brutal. And uh, Ken's going to tap this Birds of Paradise. And uh, he just attack. He attacked for one. He's going to drop uh, Micah down to uh, 17, and then he's going to pass the turn. Micah's going to crack this fetch land. And uh, afterward, he's probably going to activate this other knight. And then both these knights are going to be absolutely huge. Yep. And there he goes, activating the knight. And uh, I'm interested to see what land he decides to get here. Maze of Ith, that'll... Uh, Maze of Ith answers Progenitus pretty well. Oh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, it can't target, right? Can't get it. It has protection from everything. Even everything. Maze of Ith, Progenitus can't get caught it in that maze. doesn't get lost. <laughs> Yeah. It knows exactly where it it's going. It takes one of its heads out of that maze and just like says, yeah, Hey, I go this way. Over the go left. Whole thing. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, this maze is weak. <laughs> <laughs> weak sauce, if. Come on, do better. I've seen better mazes on cereal boxes. I'm progenitus. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so here he is bashing for 12. Now, if Ken doesn't block, he's going to go to 2. It's a pretty vicious clock. Ken knows that Micah's deck has burn spells, so I think he's in chump mode here. He's got to be. Cycle Forgotten Cape. Yep, now at the... Uh, after damage, at the end of combat step, Mike is going to use the Maze of it to untap one of these knights. Yep. That's one of those uh, tricky legacy plays. Now he can activate that knight. Not only, it's basically just pseudo-vigilance. Uh, Ken's going to activate this knight. And uh, naturally, there's going to be a natural order on top of his library when he does this. Right. Let's take a peek. What's on top? Is he going to show us? Gets a... Fetch land and then cracks them both. No, Progenitus there at the bottom. So he gets forest, forest. Doesn't doesn't look at the top of the library. It's better that way. Hmm. I like that Ken didn't even look at the top card of the library. Yeah, it's he didn't, just he didn't even better look. to not know. Yeah, no reason. Like to he know. knows he's increasing his chances by pinning his deck. It was on top of the library. It was on top. Wow. That uh, and will, just like help. that, that'll that's going to help a little bit. That'll help. But uh, it's not on the woods yet. Because uh, now, I mean, he's at five. So if Mike attacks with both knights, he's going to have to chump block. And, yeah, for uh, sure. Luckily for him, what he's going to do is he's going to... He's going to get this progenitus, and then if Micah attacks with both knights, he's going to uh, what is it? Block with both, and then he's going to use the Knight of the Reliquary to uh, search his library for a Dryad Arbor, and then any creature on the top of his library will allow him to have uh, lethal over two turns as long as Micah doesn't draw something with five or more power, which Micah has been known to do pretty consistently. Yeah, he's drawn <laughs> three Knight of the Reliquaries this game. All right, so. Mike uh, goes ahead and cracks another fetch land, driving himself down to 15 here. Here's a Taiga from Micah. Yeah, and... Uh, hmm? We don't know. Now, uh, interestingly enough, Micah can attack with both knights and then uh, untap the knight that's blocked by Progenitus with the Mace of it. Just, so. just to keep it around, yeah. 
Now, uh, it may have been a turn too late with that progenitus for Ken. Yeah, I'm wondering that too. I'm trying to do the math here, trying to look at this. I mean, at five life facing across uh, two knights that are basically a trillion, a trillion. Yeah, they're, they're plenty you big. You can't here. let either one in ever. Yeah, now, I mean, if he hadn't attacked with that big game hunter, <laughs> you're probably with this game. Oddly, but yeah, that, uh, that big That's game brutal. hunter. That's really, so it's brutal. Really brutal. Really brutal. Just throws away a guy. Block with both. Um, tap Knight of the Reliquary. Uh, go find a Dryad Arbor. You just need another chump blocker. Looks like, uh, yeah, there's what he does. Sacrifices a forest to get a different sort of forest, the kind that can block. Does he have uh, access to a Sajiri step or something like that, or no? Do we not know? I don't believe so. Okay. I mean, he doesn't play Knight of the Reliquary in his own deck, so I don't know why he'd have Sajiri step in there. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> <laughs> he only has that knight because of the, uh, the reanimate. Uh, that's well, a bit confusing. Oh, so, I guess well, he can still get dry at Arbor. He's thinning the deck, I yeah, guess. Yeah, he's just thinning his deck out. Does Micah have step? Um, we don't have his deck list. No, we're, we're not sure if Micah has the jury step. Uh, I, I don't think he does because it's it would be kind of rough. Oh, my gosh. Wow, Micah with the sick top decks. Tarmogoyf. Yeah. And that's probably at least a reasonable size goyf. Um, just, just judging from the size of Micah's graveyard. Yeah, so... Mm. Alright, well, I mean, it's... Is it four or more? I don't know if it's four or more. I mean, we, I can obviously land and creature, I think, are there. Yeah, I think it's just land and creature. So... It's only a two, three. I think Ken has to pop this and go get a Dryad Arbor. Um, and... Then he just has to draw a creature, and then have Micah not draw something on his turn. And then he's good. Yeah, I mean, that's not that far-fetched. So it's a somewhat inter interesting interaction that's happening now. Um, now, Ken is uh, tanking at the end of the turn here. Ken needs to, uh, like, really his only option is, I don't, I don't know, maybe the... Uh, I see, it seems like your your line of play makes sense to me. Crack the yeah. fetch, get a dryad arbor just as a chump blocker. Yeah, and, and uh, just draw a guy. Draw a guy, play a guy, so just another chump blocker. And then you you have him in two turns with your progenitus. He's going to go down to four. And he's going to have to grab there this dryad arbor. Whoa, 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 whoa. He grabbed a bayou? Wow. Not what we expected. So, I mean... I don't understand. I'm not really sure I understand either. Do we know what's in his hand? Just one card, right? I guess it has to be the arbor? Maybe. Why Why fetch, then? I don't understand. I mean, just to thin? Thoughtseize, not, not dry at arbor. Looks, no. So Ken That's Adams, it. not able to find an answer. Micah able to find all the answers on the top of his deck. Yeah, Micah drew very well that game. Just uh, so many threats. Really cool. And, and again, like you said, if he had not attacked with that big game hunter, that may have been very, yeah, very I, key. I wonder where the Dryad Arbor was. Yeah, wondering, uh, wondering what he was thinking about that. So, um, Well, congrats to Micah Greenbaum, yeah, who Micah advances Greenbaum to the semifinals. To the semifinals and he has, again, not yet lost a match. Yeah, hasn't lost a match yet with this deck. Uh, if he draws like that every, game, every round, <laughs> I, I understand why. I mean... <laughs> 
He has one knight, one goif as his only threat in his opener. Loses the first goif, uh, and uh, or loses loses the goif. Then ends up losing. Uh, lo well, wait, he loses the goif. Plays a knight. That gets dealt with. Plays another knight. That gets dealt with. <laughs> plays another. It's just like. It's just unlimited stream of knights on the top of this yeah, deck. Yeah, and I so, mean, wow. it was, there were a lot of things Ken could have done differently that game. Yeah. Um, Ken could have chosen to take the knight instead of the Tarmogoyf. Goyf. knight's a much bigger threat than Goyf, especially when his opponent started with double A line. Right. I think he was um, just thinking, uh, yeah, oh, I'm not even going to give him an opportunity you know? to play a threat. Yeah. If I can and keep I mean, him, the, yeah. it doesn't work like that against Agarlom. And again, that's a deck not many people have played against. It's mm -hmm. a difficult deck to play against. And I'm sure Mike has been picking up a lot of wins because people are just unfamiliar with right. Agarlom. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have uh, a winner for three months of free premium. The name of the uh, the person who won the standard portion of Star City Baltimore is Ali Antrazi. Fan favorite, as you said. We saw oh, yeah. him uh, playing Legacy earlier today. Sweet um, dude. And uh, the winner of the, the premium is the Arctor. Ooh. So congratulations to the Arctor for, uh, for winning three months of Star City Premium. Um, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break, and then uh, we will be bringing you more coverage. Of, uh, of the Legacy Top 8. Oh, that's oh, right. Oh, wait. We have some big news, big news for you guys. Is this... Uh, um, so this is a little a little morsel of information. Oh, yeah, that's right. About We're gonna a be having... preview card yeah. that's happening at midnight on StarCityGames.com. Now, I'm allowed to tell... I've been, I've been told one little... One little thing about this card right now. Thing it's... And the only thing I know so far is that it's red. Okay, so we know now... StarCityGames.com will have a an M12 spoiler tonight at midnight. And what we know about the card is that it's red. So far, that's what we know. We may be yeah. finding something else, maybe in a bit. Hopefully, maybe just, just I don't know. We haven't seen it. Yeah. Have no idea. Neither I mean, of us know what it is. All we know is that it's red. Yeah. So cool. And so uh, we'll tell you guys more as, as we soon learn as we more. know. Yeah. So we're gonna be going to break now, just for a couple of minutes, and we'll be right back to bring you more coverage of the Legacy Top Eight here in Baltimore.